So in this video I'm going to attempt to derive the equation for the pendulum and just so we know what we're aiming for, the period <coughs> is 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum over g gravitational field strength. Here's our diagram because we need a diagram to help us set it up. Um, here's our pendulum with a little mass on the end, call that M. There's, uh, this is not grossly exaggerated, um, here's our angle theta there. And one of the first things that we have to do is look at the forces. Okay, so we know that there is a force due to gravity acting downwards on that mass. We know that there is a tension force acting up <coughs> and back towards the um, uh, the uh, along the line the line. Okay, so there is an unbalanced force because these two forces don't point in the same direction, so there must be an unbalanced force. Now, it's really important to note that this is different from a conical pendulum, where in a con conical pendulum the mass is going to swing around in a sort of a 3D loop, okay, because the unbalanced force then is a centripetal force directly uh, horizontal to the mass. Whereas in this one, uh, a pendulum, we know from simple harmonic motion that the uh, restoring force is proportional to the displacement. Um, that force, which I'll write in a different colour and white, has to be back along the arc. Oops, I haven't done my arc very well, but if that's the arc where it's going back, it has to be back along in that direction. Okay, so that's where the, the unbalanced restoring force acts. And <clears throat> because that has to be at a right angle to the tension force, the only source that it can come from is the force due to gravity. So that means the force due to gravity is split into two parts, and the other part has to be uh, down here. These are not to scale, obviously. Um, and this part will be equal and opposite to the tension force, and we know that because the mass is not um, accelerating in this direction or that direction. In this plane, the same plane as the, uh, the, the cord that's holding the pendulum, there is no acceleration. The only acceleration is perpendicular to that plane, which is back along here. So that's the unbalanced force, this component of gravity. So there's our full resultant force, which is the sum of this plus this. Um, that, that I forgot where I got up to, but the tension force is balanced by that component of gravity. And, yeah. And the unbalanced force makes it accelerate. Okay, so uh, what can we work out from that? We've got a triangle down the bottom there, um, which I'm going to draw, redraw just over here. So this is FG, um, and we've got boom, and then boom, and uh, this was our restoring force. I'll just call that F, and this is negative FT. Um, we're trying to find F. F is our really important one. So, <coughs> um, what's the next thing? The next thing is to work out um, our angles. And um, when we're looking at our angles, we've got we've got theta up here because once you know the angles and we know the FG, um, which is mg, um, we can do some calculations. So that's that's what it is anyway. So. Um, the, you can find out that theta is what it is by similar triangles um, by looking at the geometry yourself. Um, it's a little bit hard to demonstrate that on here. It can be done, but um, this video is already getting long. So F equals mg sine theta. Assure yourself of that. Pause and think about it if you need to. Um, and now this is where we come to a little bit tricky. And you've probably heard that pendulums are only good for small angles. So we're going to throw in a small angle approximation which is the angle, um, maximum angle uh, or the conditions for the, the angle that tell you where you can where you can use this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say that, oh I should add a negative as well because we know it's restoring force um, and back in the opposite direction. Anyway, so that force F is going to negative mg and the approximation is that sine theta is approximately equal to theta. Okay, so mg theta. This is dealing in radians because we, um, <coughs> when we're dealing with radians, um, radians are a um, unitless measure um, and they just fit into the context a lot better because we're considering this as sort of a circular motion part. We're going to throw into the mix some circular motion um, or reference circle 
uh, equations anyway. So this is our this is our condition. This is our approximation. So if you type into your calculator sine theta, um, and then press equals for the range of values where that's approximately equal to theta, so that sine part is doing basically nothing, then um, then this approximation works, and it, it comes to be around about 10 degrees. I can't remember what that is in radians, but you can work it out um, pretty easily. So that's the maximum beyond which this approximation here no longer works and you can't make this approximation work go down to here. Anyway, <clears throat> the next thing, the next thing is, uh, and I'll change I'll change colour. Um, the next thing is that for the for the arc that it's following, we would call that length y, the displacement. And we've got the the length of the the rope is kind of going to the center of that. Um, and the okay the angle theta that it moves through if we're dealing with radians <coughs> equals y over l this is how they arrive at um, at radians the definition for radians is the arc length over the radius um, so for a complete 360 degree circle which is 2 pi radians um, you have the entire circumference divided by the radius and if you remember that the circumference divided by the radius, remember the formula for circumference, that equals 2 pi times the radius. Can you see where that's going? So circumference over the radius equals 2 pi. So this is a definition. Um, but this is the approximate, this is the thing we're next going to use anyway. So we can make our, um, our equation go to this f equals negative mgy, which is the displacement over L, the length of the pendulum. <coughs> okay. <coughs> the, excuse me, I have to stop and cough every now and then. The next step is to throw in Newton's, uh, I always mix up his laws, but Newton's, what we would call Newton's second law, f equals ma, very roughly, it's, it's not exactly that, but um, where, let's just put that in, f equals mass times acceleration. You can see that um, from this we get acceleration is going to be equal to negative g negative g y over l okay that's because the uh, if you take the mass part out then what's left is this negative and the g y over l and that must be equal to a <coughs> excuse me now um, now this is where we start to bring in some simple harmonic motion ideas as well and you can see why you need to know your stuff so well um, to your concepts, your formula and everything to be able to follow this all the way through. Um, the formula we need is A equals omega squared Y, where is my, I've got a blue now, so A equals omega squared Y, okay, um, or if you want to be strictly speaking correct, negative, and we'd better be strictly speaking because we've been strictly speaking so far, and this tells us that <coughs> excuse me, omega, because uh, we're looking at the common factors in here, these are two equations, that this one's an expression for the maximum acceleration A at the maximum uh, displacement and yeah, um, with some harmonic motion, um, Y would be A if it was for the maximum, but we're just looking at the displacement Y. Anyway, um, hopefully you followed that, if not, sorry, I'm a bit foggy headed from being sick, and anyway, um, this tells us that omega squared is equal to g over l. Okay, omega squared equals g over l. Um, so from that, we get that omega squared equals g over l. Okay, so omega is going to be equal to square root g over l, which is interesting because that's that's part of our formula, isn't it? We're just missing the two pi now. We're actually down to relatively simple steps <coughs> from this, um, and that's that uh, if you remember the period, or well, no, we won't do it that way, the angular velocity omega, another another um, omega, is the um, is 2 pi, which is one complete rotation, over the time period it takes to do one complete rotation. Okay, so um, if we take both of these together, in fact, we'll rearrange. We'll rearrange first to go t equals two pi over omega, and um, and we put 
me put that together in actual fact with with this um, we end up with uh, t equals 2 pi and then uh, 1 over the square root of g over l okay because omega is on the omega is on the bottom over here and we need uh, so you can see where it's going to go 1 over this is just the same as square root l over g and we end up with our final formula it seems quite amazing to get there from this. So t equals 2 pi square root l over g. And it's wonderful, super wonderful, and we're all very happy that we arrived at that. Not quite in under 10 minutes, but there you go. So it's the equation for a pendulum derived, all in the physics lounge, with 6m. <laughs> He'll go blow his nose right now.